The United Nations Education, Scientific, and Cultural Organization was formed in 1945 as a specialist branch of the United Nations that would focus on encouraging cooperation between countries in education, the arts, science, and culture. More commonly known as UNESCO, it began the World Heritage Site Program in 1972, whereby it would designate places around the globe as ones that should be protected because of cultural or natural importance. Today, 1,154 have been added to the list, which has proven to be one of the most successful initiatives to have come from the UN. It's time then to explore some of them, so join me. We're going to take a tour around the world to visit the 15 most amazing UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Number 15. Great Smoky Mountains National Park, United States Straddling the border between Tennessee and North Carolina along the ridge line of the Great Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is one of the most stunning and serene landscapes you can visit in North America. It covers an area of just over 816 square miles and was first chartered by the U.S. Congress in 1934, subsequently becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983 and recognized as UNESCO International Biosphere Reserve in 1988. It was the first national park in the United States to be provided with federal funds to go towards its governance, and it's now the most visited national park in the country, with around 14 million visitors each year, more than twice the figure of the Grand Canyon, and this brings in an estimated $2.5 billion to the local community. The main reason it's so popular is there's so much to do and see there. Highway 441 travels right through the middle, which gives fairly easy access throughout, and some of the most spectacular views and there's a number of historical sites to visit, such as Cades Cove, which is a valley full of log cabins, barns, and churches, Roaring Fork and Cataloochee. There's also a wealth of wildlife, including 200 species of birds, 50 species of fish, 39 species of reptiles, and 43 amphibians, alongside a large black bear population and one of the world's most important salamander habitats. Of course, the park is ideal for outdoor pursuits, too, with more than 850 miles of trails and unpaved roads that, with routes leading up to the mountains or remaining on flat ground, are suitable for people of all abilities. There are plenty of campsites within the borders, too, which gives visitors the opportunity to explore the park at their own pace and spend as much time as they want there. Number 14. Timbuktu, Mali the historic city of Timbuktu, which is in the modern-day country of Mali, has long been an important seasonal community along trade routes in the region, and first became a permanent settlement in the 12th century. Its involvement in the trade of salt, gold, ivory, and slaves led it to becoming an extremely affluent place, and it would become a highly valued city in the ruling empires that vied for control of that region in the following centuries, first becoming part of the Mali Empire, then the Songhai Empire, and then the capital of the Moroccan Empire before declaring itself independent. Its golden age, though, was during the Mali Empire in the 14th, 15th, and 16th centuries, and this is when it became associated with literature and the establishment of an Islamic university, the Sankore Madrasa, that made it the scholarly capital of Africa. It attracted academics from across the Islamic world, and many thousands of manuscripts were written there to share knowledge throughout the empire. Its rich history led to the city becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988, despite it now being a mere shadow of its former self. And there are suspicions that there's still far more to learn about Timbuktu's significance to the ancient world, since many of the ruins and artifacts have long been covered by thick layers of sand. Number 13. Trang An Landscape Complex, Vietnam in 2014, UNESCO inscribed the Trung An Landscape Complex in Vietnam as a World Heritage Site. And once you see just how stunning this place is, it soon becomes clear why. It's located near the city of Ninh Binh on the Red River Delta, and it's a protected region covering an area of 24 square miles of scenic spots. There are two main types of ecosystems within this area, the waterways of the River Delta and the limestone mountains that surround it. This has allowed for growth of vast limestone and evergreen forests in the valleys, with an estimated 600 different species of plants and 200 species of animals, a large number of which aren't found anywhere else in the world and are on the red list at a risk of extinction. The water habitat, too, is rich with a large number of rare species, and travelers to the area can, if they're lucky, have the chance to see striped-necked turtles, phoenix pheasants, leopards, and many more. 
The best way to see this landscape complex is by boat, where guides can take you along the river delta and even into some of the limestone caves, as well as the natural beauty. It's also a place that's steeped in cultural history that's still celebrated today, and the communities along the shore have become known for their annual festivals and traditions that attract visitors from around the globe. Number 12, Teotihuacan, Mexico. The historic cultures that lived across the Americas built vast and complicated cities across the continent, but unfortunately, very few of them have survived to current times. One of the most important that has, though, is Teotihuacan, which is around 25 miles to the northeast of Mexico City. During its heyday, around 2,000 years ago, it's thought to have had a population of about 125,000 people, which would have easily made it the largest city in the Americas and the sixth largest in the world at that time. Not entirely clear who it was that built the city, though, and there have been some suggestions that it may have actually been a multi-ethnic place that brought together different peoples from across the region. But what is clear is that they were technologically ahead of their time and would have been part of a thriving empire. The site covers an area of about eight square miles and features some of the most important Mesoamerican structures of all. The most famous are, of course, the Pyramid of the Sun and the Pyramid of the Moon. But there's also the Avenue of the Dead, which was lined with tombs, the Temple of the Feathered Serpent Quetzalcoatl, and ruins of the Quetzalcoatl Palace. With so much to see, it's the most visited historical site in Mexico, with more than 4 million people going there each year. And while this raises much-needed funds to help with the preservation and continued exploration of the site, UNESCO inscribed it as a World Heritage Site in 1987 to help give it the recognition it needed to protect it for generations to come. Number 11. Cohiba National Park, Panama Located off the Pacific coastline of Panama is the island of Cohiba, which, with a size of 194 square miles, is the largest island in Central America. Geological records have shown that it was separated from the mainland at some point between 12 and 18,000 years ago, when the sea level started to rise at the end of the last ice age, and this has meant that the plant and animal species that were there at the time have evolved independently of their relatives on the continent. And now there are a number of large endemic species that aren't found anywhere else. In 1919, a penal colony was built on the island that became renowned for its brutal conditions and its presence there that meant that no one else was particularly keen on the idea of developing any other parts. By the time the prison was finally closed in 2004, the island remained in virtually pristine condition, having not been transformed in the same way as many others in the region, and is amazingly still 75% covered in forest, a large part of which is ancient forest. The government of Panama first created the Cohiba National Park in 1992, and it covers an area of over a thousand square miles. This not only covers the main island, but 38 smaller islands and marine regions, and it's full of forest, beaches, mangroves, and coral reefs. The unique geography of the region has also meant that the water in the area is protected against El Nino temperature changes, so it's one of the most biodiverse marine environments in the world. With 760 species of fish, 33 species of shark, 20 species of cetaceans, and unique land animals like the Cohiba Island Howler Monkey and the Cohiba Spinetail, it's no wonder that it became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005. Number 10. Cordoba, Spain Sat on the banks of the Guadalquivir River in southern Spain, Cordoba is the 11th largest city in the country, but one that's rich in history. It began as an early Roman settlement, which then became part of the Kingdom of the Goths, and following its fall was taken over during the Muslim conquest during the 8th century, and was chosen to become the capital city of the Umayyad Caliphate of Cordoba. In the mid-13th century, it was conquered by Christian forces and integrated into the Crown of Castile, which itself was then eventually incorporated into Spain. It was during its time under Muslim rule, though, that the city truly became one of the most important places in the world. It became an economic powerhouse thanks to trade in leather, metalwork, tiles, textiles, and agricultural goods, and this wealth was invested into the construction of more than 80 libraries and educational institutions. It soon became one of the most important centers of learning on Earth, with a particular focus on medicine, mathematics, astronomy, and botany. It nurtured a number of history's greatest thinkers, too, and because of the architecture that remains, as well as its important role in the development of these disciplines, its cathedral was first named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1984, and subsequently, this was expanded to cover the whole historic center. Today, it's possible to see countless examples of Roman, Islamic, Jewish, and Christian monuments and structures, making it a glorious combination of these cultures in a way that's rarely seen anywhere else. 
Number 9. Los Glaciares National Park, Argentina Covering an area of approximately 2,800 square miles, the Los Glaciares National Park is the largest area of protected land in Argentina. It's in the Santa Cruz province in the southern part of the country and was established by the government in 1937 before becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1981. It contains the southern part of the Andes mountain range and it's here that the glaciers that the park is named after form. In fact, the ice cap in this region is the largest in the world outside of Antarctica, Greenland, and Iceland and feeds into 47 glaciers that cover almost a third of the entire national park. When you think of icy landscapes, this national park is exactly what you'd imagine. The glaciers travel into pristine blue lakes and the best way to see them for yourselves is by regularly scheduled boat tours. It's not all frozen tundra, though, as there's a region of well-preserved subpolar forest which hosts a number of important animal species. There are, for example, more than 100 species of birds in the area, such as condors and eagles, and it's also the perfect habitat for populations of rheas, guanaco, cougars, and South American gray foxes. For many of the animals that live there, it is one of the last protected regions that's virtually untouched by human development, so not only is the park important for its spectacular scenery, but for the long-term protection of its residents as well. Number 8. Old Havana, Cuba Founded by the Spanish in 1519, Havana has a natural border on the Cuban coastline that was a vital refuge for the treasure ships that were transporting the plundered loot from the New World back to Europe. Soon becoming a major shipbuilding center, the fortress that were being made there made it look like the city would go from strength to strength, but things suddenly changed in 1555. The city was easily conquered by Jacques de Sores, a French pirate who virtually burned the entire place to the ground. Unfortunately for him, though, he was unable to find the treasure he had expected to steal and was forced to flee. The Spanish decided to rebuild, but this time they made sure to build a number of fortresses to ensure it couldn't be invaded again, and that formed the basis for the old Havana borough as it is today. Soon, buildings sprung up with a Baroque and neoclassical architecture, and while many of them have deteriorated over the years, it remains an incredible site with a number of churches, palaces, forts, and monuments that have been preserved in a way unlike anything you'll see elsewhere. While the style is similar to what you'll see in places like the islands of Tenerife or the city of Cadiz, these sites have been redeveloped in modern times, whereas Old Havana retains its historical style. For this, and because of its role as the main port on the route to the New World, the entire borough was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1982. On the back of this, funding was secured to help maintain and restore the buildings that have fallen into disrepair. And even though this is an unending task because of the scale of the deterioration, it'll hopefully help protect the historic site for the future. Number 7. Itsukushima Shinto Shrine, Japan Across Japan, from remote rural locations to densely packed urban places, there are more than 100,000 Shinto shrines, which are places that house kami, which are the deities of the Shinto religion. One of the most famous and most photographed of all is the Itsukishima Shrine, which can be found on an island in Hatsukaichi City in the southwest of the country. Said to have first been built in the year 593, but created in its current form in 1168, it's dedicated to the three daughters of the kami, called Susano o no Mikoto, who together are the Shinto goddesses of seas and storms. The name Itsukushima roughly translates to mean the island dedicated to the gods, and the island itself is also considered to be a god, which is why the shrine is built on its edge. Built in the Shenzhen Sukuri style, the shrine has pier-like structures that lead out into the bay to keep it connected with the water. Probably the most famous part of the site is its 50-foot or 15-meter tall Vermilion Tori Gate, which is made from camphor wood that's decay-resistant. And when there's a high tide, it looks like it's floating. With such religious and architectural significance, the shrine became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996, and it's also one of Japan's designated national treasures. Number 6. Bagan, Myanmar According to the Royal Chronicles of Myanmar, the ancient city of Bagan was first inhabited in the 2nd century and would go on to become fortified in the year 849. While there's dispute about the truth of this between academics, what is certain is that it became the capital city of the Bagan Kingdom between the 9th and the 13th centuries, and it was during this time that the surrounding regions were first unified into the country that's now known as Myanmar. 
It was a hugely wealthy kingdom that, in the space of 250 years, would build more than 10,000 religious monuments in the Bagan Plains, which covers an area of 40 square miles. And the city attracted great minds from around the world to become a leading place for both religious and scientific studies. At one point, the city was home to as many as 200,000 people, but would eventually fall to the Mongol invasions and was never able to recover. Many of the structures were, of course, destroyed during conquests in the plains, but as many as 2,200 of the temples and pagodas have survived through to today. The entire region has been turned into the Bagan Archaeological Zone by the government in an attempt to preserve what's left and give the opportunity to researchers to learn more about the ancient empire. And to lend assistance to this aim, UNESCO inscribed it as a World Heritage Site in 2019. Number 5. Serengeti National Park Tanzania. Protecting a space of 5,700 square miles, the government of what was then Tanganyika first established the Serengeti National Park in 1940. In the following years, it was increased in size to what it is today in Tanzania, and was established as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1981. With more than 3.7 million acres of virgin savanna ecosystem, it's arguably one of the most important protected regions on Earth. It's where the largest animal migration on Earth takes place, when more than 1.5 million blue wildebeest, 250,000 zebra, and herds of gazelle and eland move to new food sources. It's also home to the largest lion population on the African continent, with more than 3,000 individuals. There are also important populations of African leopards, buffalo, bush elephants, and black rhinos, along with countless other mammals such as hyena, hippos, and honey badgers. Primates like olive baboons and patas monkeys, reptiles like Nile crocodiles, serrated hinge terrapins, and African pythons, plus more than 500 species of birds. Somewhat controversially, it became involved in the relocation of members of the Maasai people who have lived there for generations. It's expressly forbidden for any peoples to live there apart from staff of the Parks Authority, researchers, and staff at the lodges and hotels. The reason for this is, of course, in an attempt to protect the animals from human development and poaching. And while this is strictly enforced, it's still thought that as many as 200,000 animals in the park are poached each year. This just shows the scale of the problem and the reason why it's so important that protected regions like these have been created. Number 4. Angkor Wat, Cambodia Holding the record for being the largest religious monument in the world, Angkor Wat, which is in Cambodia, was built during the 12th century by King Suryavarman II of the Khmer Empire as a Hindu temple dedicated to the god Vishnu. Interestingly, it slowly turned into a Buddhist temple as the century came to an end, which means it's often referred to as a Hindu-Buddhist temple and has features associated with both faiths. It covers an area of 402 acres and has a temple mountain at the center that's in an east-west orientation and surrounded by an outer wall that's two and a half miles long and a moat that's more than three miles long. Building all the structures on this site was a huge engineering achievement and everything that's there was done for a particular purpose. Perhaps the most surprising of all is the moat itself. At first, it was thought to be a defensive perimeter, but in recent years, studies have shown that it has a critical purpose. The water within it actually creates a resistant barrier that prevents the weight of the materials used to build the temple from causing the ground to collapse beneath it. With countless monuments, sculptures, and statues, as well as carvings that have taught us about the Khmer Empire, it's a site that remains the most important in the respective religions. Angkor Wat was inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1992. Number 3. The Lascaux Caves, France In September of 1940, four boys went out together to explore the Dordogne. They had heard a legend of a secret tunnel that ran under the Vézère River and set out to see it for themselves. While they didn't find the tunnel, they found something far more archaeologically significant. After following a depression in the ground, they found themselves inside a cave and shone their oil lamp around the walls and ceiling. The light revealed an extraordinary set of paintings, what the boys described as a cavalcade of animals larger than life. They had discovered the Lascaux paintings, an extensive set of cave art that's believed to be more than 17,000 years old. Soon after, the cave was opened for the general public to visit and attracted as many as 1,700 people a day. Unfortunately, this led to the painting's deterioration, particularly because of the introduction of mold, and it was closed. With almost 6,000 different figures of animals, humans, and abstract shapes, the Lascaux Cave contains the best-preserved examples of such artwork anywhere in the world. 
It's thought they represent accounts of past hunting expeditions and potentially even evidence of rituals that took place at the time. As such an important site for the history of our species, UNESCO chose to declare it a World Heritage Site in 1979 as part of the wider valley where there are a number of other important ancient discoveries. Number 2. Acropolis, Athens, Greece Built on a rocky outcrop that overlooks the city of Athens in Greece, the Acropolis is probably the most famous historical site that remains from the ancient Greeks. It's actually made up of a number of important buildings, including the Parthenon, which was a temple dedicated to the goddess Athena. And it wouldn't have been known as the Acropolis at the time that it was used, because this is simply a generic term, and it was most likely called Secropia, in honor of Secrops, who is said to have been the first king of Athens. Evidence has been found that buildings were on the site as far back as 6,000 years ago, but the ones that still stand today have their origins in a construction project that took place in the 5th century BC, under the instruction of Pericles, a politician during the Greek Golden Age. As well as the Parthenon, there's also a ceremonial gateway called the Propylaea, another temple for Athena called the Erechtheion, and the Temple of Anathea Nike, which was where the Greeks would worship the two goddesses. Throughout the site, there are some of the best examples of ancient Greek artistry and structural techniques, and even though the structures were severely damaged during bombardment in the 17th century, there's still plenty there to see and learn. A huge project for restoration is currently underway, thanks in part to it becoming a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987, and it's hoped that this will preserve these buildings for a long time to come. Number 1. Mesa Verde, United States Situated in Montezuma County, Colorado, and covering an area of 82 square miles, the Mesa Verde National Park was first established by Congress and President Roosevelt in 1906, and became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1978. It's a hugely important archaeological region, with more than 5,000 different sites of interest, including as many as 600 cliff dwellings, such as the famous Cliff Palace, which is believed to be the largest of its kind in North America. Evidence of a human presence in the region has been traced back to at least 9,500 years ago, when the people there would have originally been hunter-gatherers before learning how to farm and eventually develop construction techniques. The cliff dwellings that the park is arguably most famous for were probably made about 800 years ago, but within a century those that still live there were forced to move elsewhere, likely as a result of prolonged droughts that meant they had to seek out new sources of water. A huge number of artifacts have been found in the area, such as baskets, tools, and examples of pottery. And amazing structures have been found like the sun temples that helped farmers chart the passage of seasons and reservoirs that were used to irrigate crops. The entire park is an incredibly preserved historical monument and is seen as one of the most important worldwide, not just because of how it proved humans were on the continent far earlier than had previously been thought but because of how the structures have been virtually untouched since they were abandoned. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.